Good afternoon, I'm Officer Robert Reeves, the Public Information Officer for the Irving Police Department. I'm giving a debrief on an incident that happened in the 400 block of Renaissance Lane. At approximately 11.15 this morning, our dispatch received a call from a female stating that she was wanting to speak to her brother and she was heading to a residence there in the 400 block of Renaissance Lane. Irving officers responded to a possible suicidal subject call. When officers uh, arrived on scene, they did make contact with one male. Um, that male retreated into the residence and the officers started hearing several shots being fired. Uh, more officers got on scene. The officers ended up forcing entry into the residence where they found two deceased females and one deceased male. The investigation is in its very beginning stages. Uh, right now, this does appear to be a murder-suicide uh, investigation, but we are still working through that process to try to get all the in individuals identified. But we do know that they are all, all the victims are adults. Can you tell us the relationship between the victims? So I do not have that information right now as far as the relationships. We're still trying to make sure that we get everybody identified and, and notifying of next of kin. Um, but we, we do know that uh, the, the person that called was related to individuals there in the residence. And, um, and they, that's where we're at right now. Can you tell us what kind of steps you guys took from the moment you got the call to the point of entry and finding the bodies, please? So officers responded to the scene. Um, as more officers were uh, getting set up, we uh, set up a emergency action team. That's a team that's going to respond in case they start hearing more shots being fired. We were trying to identify if there was anybody else inside the residence at the time. Um, we believe that there was just one person when we first got on scene. Um, we did use an explosive breach to gain entry into the residence. And then once they went inside the residence, that's where they uh, discovered the, the three persons. When you contacted police, did she raise alarm about a welfare check or uh, what was her motive for contacting the police? She was concerned about the her brother and, uh, and that's so we did respond there on a welfare check of a possible suicidal, a person threatening suicide. Have you responded to your knowledge of, to any events there before? Um, from what I've gathered right now, it does not appear that we've ever been to this location uh, before. Can we have the physical address itself? Uh, right now, it's just the 400 block of Renaissance Lane. That's what we're, we're releasing right now, is just the block. How would you classify this in, I know that the people inside are, are dead, but none of your officers were hurt. Was is it exactly what you guys prepared for? Tell me about that. So, no officers were hurt. Of course, we were updating the, the public on our, our social media platforms because we wanted to make sure that, you know, everybody was seeing a large police presence there on 6th Street and we had 6th Street shut down for a short time period. Um, the reasons for those updates on our social media platforms was to make sure that everybody knew that there's no outstanding suspects. Um, the investigation is, everything that we need for that investigation is inside the residence. So the, the 6th Street should be open if it's not already here shortly. And, um, but we do prepare for these types of, of incidences and responding to them. And just to be clear, was there ever any uh, uh, gunfire exchange between Anyone in that house and the officers responded? No, no officers uh, discharged any weapons. The, the only use of force by the Irving Police Department was when we used the explosive charge to gain entry into the residence. How many officers would you say responded? What, what was like, the officers, uh, emergency services like ambulance, fire department, etc.? Correct. So once we heard that shots, once the, the officer, one of the officers on scene stated that they did hear gunfire. Uh, every available officer pretty much starts heading that way to see if they can assist in some way. So uh, we did have Irving Fire Department standing by um, at a safe distance. Uh, once we realized the scene was safe, we rushed them in there to uh, try to administer first aid to the persons inside the residence, but they were already pronounced, they were pronounced deceased. To make it clear to the audience, to the viewers, do you wanna let them know, for sh I, I, I wanna make sure all of the suspects were, everybody's, but there's nobody loose. Correct, correct. There is there is nothing in this investigation that makes us think there is any other suspects. Um, like I said, we, we believe this is going to be a murder-suicide type of incident. Um, the, the scene is safe. The neighborhood is safe. There's, there's no danger to anyone else in the neighborhood. And we do know the individuals deceived, one male and two females? Correct. One adult male and two adult females. 
Did you tell us uh, the timeline? I mean, when the first call, when the when the call came in? So we received the call. Uh, I think it to be the exact. It was about 11:18 a.m. this morning. So y'all gonna be out there for a while. Correct. Our our crime scene is is on on scene right now. Our investigators are on scene and, and they're working through the investigation like every critical incident along this nature to uh, process it. Are these apartments or individually townhomes? No, they are uh, individual townhomes. Any mess I know this is Domestic Violence Awareness Month and being that uh, everyone in the house may have been related some kind of way, any message about that at all? You know, the, during this time period with uh, the pandemic that has been occurring, we, ha we have seen domestic issues rise. Uh, we just ask that if someone knows that someone may be in that type of situation to check on them, uh, maybe provide an outlet for them. Please continue to contact the police department. Uh, we, we do want to bring awareness to domestic violence, and we do want those uh, victims to get their justice through those accusers being prosecuted. So, uh, so we definitely want you know, to bring some awareness to domestic violence awareness month, but at the same time, um, you know, we're working through the process on this investigation. Do you think uh, part of the situation right now with, like you're talking about, the domestic violence and all that, is the pandemic we're living in, uh, just the situation? Could you elaborate on that if possible? With the pandemic and people not being able to get out to their normal avenues of escape possibly from their offenders like school or work, um, or maybe the offender is the one going to work, that does sometimes create more hostile situations inside the homes. So that is an unfortunate um, side effect of things being shut down, right? People are, are with each other a lot more often than they might be before, and so tempers sometimes rise and they don't have an avenue of escape. Um, as far as, re as it relates to children or some people, where we usually find out about those victims is when they go to school and the teachers or counselors notice those markings of abuse on them, and that's when they usually uh, notify the police department. What do you want people to do if they see it or if they're a recipient of abuse? Be that advocate. Uh, don't just say, you know, if you're in that apartment complex and you hear the neighbor fighting, don't just be the person that's, I'm not going to get involved. You may be the only person that can save that individual's life. So you need to take it upon yourself and be that advocate that contacts the police department. You can remain anonymous, but you need to be an advocate for those victims that are out there. If you're the victim, what should you do? If you're the victim, reach out to us. Um, we, you can do it through phone calls. You can do it through emails. You can do it by just calling up to the police department. Uh, reach out to us so that we can get you some assistance. There, there are lots of services that are available to victims of domestic violence to help get them out of that 